Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So now this is, we are vastly, quickly, quickly approaching Ramadan and this is going to be the last khutbah of Jumu'ah before Ramadan. So this is my last chance to remind the people that this is a time that we need to use this opportunity to give back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make tawbah and fix everything that we need to fix in our lives and fix everything that we need to fix between each other. Use this opportunity and do not let this opportunity pass you by. You never, you never know and you don't know if you're ever going to get another chance. We don't know if we're even going to make it through Ramadan. So we need to make sure that we utilize every second and every chance that we have to get closer to Allah and to make amends for everything that we've done in this life that we need to take that opportunity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he commanded the believers when he said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina aminu, tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuhan. Asa rabbukum, asa rabbukum an yukafir ankum sayyatikum. Asa rabbukum an yukafir ankum sayyatikum. Wa yudakhidukum jannati tajri min tahtiya al-anharu. Yawma la yughzi allahu nabiyya wa ladhina aminu ma'ah. Nuruhum yas'a bayna aydihim wa bi'imanihim. يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا أَتْمَمْ لَنَا نُورَنَا وَغَفِرْ لَنَا إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the believers, He said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمِنُوا O you who believe, tubu إِلَى اللَّهِ He said, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala تَوْبَةً نَصُوحًا تَوْبَةً نَصُوحًا It means that you make tawbah, that you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a sincere way and fulfilling all the conditions that you have to fulfill for that tawbah, for that repentance to be accepted. And this means that you do it wholeheartedly. It's not something that you do with your tongue, but we're going to go over the conditions, inshallah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the Quran and also what came in the Sunnah. 
But this is what Tawbah al nusuha is. Tawbah al nusuha is that you fulfill all the conditions of making Tawbah. And from amongst those conditions that you leave off the sin, you start to feel sadness over the sin. And then obviously, first and foremost, you have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have like a regret over everything that you've done in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you have done some type of oppression to another person, then you need to fix that oppression before the day of judgment. Because on the day of judgment, everybody's going to be getting their rights. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Asa rabbukum. And you kafir ankum sayyatikum. So if you do this, if you do this tawbah, fulfilling all the conditions of the tawbah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you all of your sins. You kafir ankum sayyatikum. Wa yudakhilukum jannah. And they will enter you into the jannah. You know, jannatun, jannatin tajri min tahti al anhar. The, the paradise. With what? With rivers flowing beneath. Then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Yawma la yuhzillahu al nabiyya wa ladina amanu ma'a. This is a day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not dishonor the Prophet and the people who believe with him, the people who stayed in sincerity, the people that followed the Quran and the Sunnah, the people that continued to go back whenever they made a mistake, they would return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor them. He will not dishonor them. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, So anybody that believes and follows the Prophet وسلم, this is a day that they will be honored for making that tawbah, for, for, for fulfilling these conditions and returning to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Nuruhum yasa'abayna aydihim. That the light that they'll have on the day of judgment will be just protruding from between their two hands. Will be aymanihim, and from their right, and from the right side, yaqulun, and then they'll be saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this day, Rabbana atmam lana nurana. Please, ya Rabbi, complete this light that you've given us. Well, uh, and forgive us our sins. Because you are with everything, you are capable of doing all things. This alone should be sufficient. Everything that I'm going to say after this is only going to be to give you the, the conditions of what you need to do to make Tawbah, this type of Tawbah that's spoken about in this ayah. But this should be enough. This should be enough that everybody goes home and starts reevaluating their lives, reevaluating their relationships with each other, and all the things that we've done because we have to focus on taking account of ourselves. Just like, you know, just like it was said by, you know, it was Umar ibn Khattab, brother Manu, he said, Hasibu, Anfusakum Kabalan to Hasibu. He said, you take account of yourselves before that account is taken of you on the day of judgment. So anything that you have now before Ramadan, you need to sit down with yourself. You need that quiet time. You know, and this, this is, the, this is the, what we keep talking about over and over, this, the Ramadan is not a time for social gatherings. This is a time to fix yourself and get yourself back together. This is not the time to be wasting time chit-chatting with people and laughing and joking and catching up on old times. This is a time to be in the masjid, reading the Quran, a time to be in the masjid, praying, and doing all the things that you have to do to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your day should be spent in the remembrance of Allah, and your night should be spent in the remembrance of Allah. If you're wasting your time eating and drinking and chit-chatting with people, you're wasting this opportunity. So now let's look at these conditions that we have to fulfill to make tawbah in the correct manner. In the correct manner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, He said, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاهِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَا يَغْفِرُوا ذُنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يَسِرُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave two conditions. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاهِشَةً If they do any type of immoral act, any type of indecent behavior, فَاهِشَةً Allah. The first off, as soon as they do that act, they start to remember Allah. They remember Allah and they start to have sadness in because now they they've obeyed, they disobeyed their Creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done every single thing for you, provided from you, provided you with knowledge, provided you with food and clothing and everything that you need to live your life and to be a Muslim and do the things that you have to do, and you've just disobeyed him. You should feel sadness over that. You should feel sadness every day of your life of all the disobedience that we're doing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He's the one that's given us everything. He's given us everything. He's given you guidance. And if you down this guidance, He saved you from the hellfire. It's not, not a reason to be thankful. It's not, not a reason to go back and make tawbah and be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try our best not to disobey Him. But we put the, the rights of people over the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we forget the rights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has over us. 
We forget that. And we focus on my rights and what I, this person done me wrong and that person done him wrong. And, but you forget the rights of all doing injustice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing you for you night and day. What are you giving back? What are you giving back? How many of you are in the masjid every single day? How many of you are trying to learn your deen? How many of you are reading Quran? How many of you are praying at night? Well, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to stand up at night until his feet used to crack. And what did Aisha radiallahu say? She said, and the Kana Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam layl had to to she used to stay, she said that he used to stand up at night until his feet used to crack from standing so long. And she said, She said, why do you do this, O Messenger of Allah? And Allah subhanahu wa has already forgiven you all your previous sins and all your sins to come. He said, Should I not be a, a thankful servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So think about this as the messenger of Allah. And this is what he does to try to, you know, be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all that he's given him. What about us? What about us? Well, like you can't even get the people in the masjid today. Can't even get the people in the masjid. We pray every salat, the masjid's empty. What type of thankfulness is this? But you think about the things that you want to do, the things that you want to have fun with, the thing, your rights, but you forget the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is over us and his commands and prohibitions. So here, after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he said that once they, once they do a bad, a bad sin, they what? They remember Allah. They go back to the obedience. And they seek forgiveness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't sit back and wait and postpone it and say, I'm going to make tawbah when I'm 40 years old. Or I'll make tawbah later right now. Let me enjoy myself. No. As soon as they do that sin, they remember Allah and they seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. They don't postpone any type of tawbah. And who's going to forgive the sins except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, And they don't continue to do it. That means you make a mistake. You make tawbah. And that's it. You're done. You're finished. You don't go back to that sin. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, In the movement, That the believer, the true believer, does not get stung from the same hole twice. When you realize that you made a mistake, you back off and that's it. You don't go back to that mistake again. You make tawbah and you keep it rolling. But no, you don't, well, let me sirru ala ma fa'ala. They don't continue just to do the same act over. You make tawbah, then you go back and you do it again. You make tawbah and you do it again. Nah, you're, you're, you're joking. You're not taking this seriously. He said, So what is the reward for the people that do this? That they have forgiveness from the Lord. And gardens of paradise. Again, the second time that he mentioned that these gardens of paradise are for the people of Toba, for the people of Taqwa. Not for the people who play games with his deen. And not for the people who don't take this seriously, who sit in their homes and watching TV and then think, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on me. And this is for the people of Toba, for the people of Taqwa. He said, Jazaahum afiratum min rabbihim wa jannatun tajri min tahti al-anharu khalidin fiha and be like this everlasting. Wa ni'ma ajrul aamileen. And this is the best blessing. The best blessing for the person who acts on it. For the best, the best blessing. You can't get better than this. You get that jannah. You get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from reward from what? Returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfilling the obligations that we have upon us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned another condition of tawbah. Well, he said, إِنَّمَا تَوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالًا ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the tawbah is only for the people who do a, a bad act with ignorance. Not that they know what they're doing. They know that this is haram and they continue to do it. No, he said that the, the tawbah, the real repentance is for the people who do what? They do, a, they do an act, but it's out of ignorance. Then once they know that this, that this act is disobedience, what do they do? They go back and they make tawbah. He said, يَعْمَلُونَ صُوبِ جَحَالًا ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ And then swiftly, they go and they make tawbah. So that's twice now. We see that what? Be swift in making tawbah. Don't postpone it. Don't think like I'll just do it next week or let me, let me enjoy myself now. I'm 18 years old, 19, 20, whatever. Let me have some fun. No. 
He said min qareeb for you know like uh, he doesn't postpone the tawbah. Now you notice throughout the Quran, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Tawbah, He mentions one of the name or the attributes that has to do with what? With Tawbah, Maghfirah, and who Tawwabul Tawwabul Rahim, who al Ghafurul Rahim. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning Tawbah, He said, Wahua Alim, can Allah Aliman Hakima. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alim, which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of everything. He knows the people who are making sincere tawbah from the people who are just playing games and just doing things with their tongues, but they're not in their hearts. Well, hakiman, that he guides the people who he knows fit that, you know, fit that description. The people, the people that really truly have the sincerity in their heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hikmah. He has wisdom and he's the one, those are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to accept their repentance and guide them. Then after that, he said, well, said the toba. Now he's saying that this is the toba is not for what? For these, these are the people that toba is for. He said, well, he said the toba to lilladina ya'maluna sayyati hata idha hadra ahaduhumul mawtu qala inni tuptu an. He said, Tawbah is not for the person who sits around disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his whole entire life. And then right at the time of death, he says, oh, inni tuptu an. Now, now I'm going to repent. No, it's not accepted. It's rejected at your, at your time of death. It's rejected at the time of death. So at the time of death, Tawbah is not accepted. So you have to make Tawbah before your death. And since you don't know when that is, we all need to get busy. And then after that, he said, And the Tawbah is also not accepted from anybody who dies on Kufr. So a person who's not praying, he's not doing anything, then all of a sudden he dies. And there's no Tawbah for that person. He died on disbelief. He left off the salat and stopped praying. What the Prophet said, He said that the, the, the contract, the binding agreement between us and them, what separates us and the kuffar is what? A salat, the prayer, and whoever leaves it off, he is disbelieved. And now he's going to go what? At the time of his death and say, oh no, I want to pray now. No, it's too late. You need to make that decision today to get back and return to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do what you have to do as a believer and do what you have to do to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahu li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-mu'mineen astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim So one of the other conditions came in a hadith in Abi Hurairah uh, in which he said, he said, عَنَا نَبِيَ صَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمُ قَالَ مَنْ كَانَ عِنْدُهُ مَظْلَمَةٌ لِأَخِيهِ مِنْ عِرْضِهِ أَوْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَيَتَحَلَّ لَهُ مِنْهُ أَلْيَوْمْ قَبْلَا لَا يَكُونَ دِنَارٌ وَلَا دِرْحَمْ فَإِنْ كَانَ لَهُ عَمَنُ صَالِحٌ أُخِذَ مِنْهُ بِقَدْرِ مَظْلَمَتِهِ وَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ حَسَنَاتٌ أُخِذَ مِنْ سَيَّاتِ صَاحِبِهِ حُمِلَ عَلَيْهِ And this hadith is in Bukhari. So this, this is the condition of Tawbah for the person who now has oppressed another person. So in this the Prophet Sallallahu said, he said, whoever has any issue between him and his brother, then let him fix it now. Let him fix it now. Fix it today, whatever it is, whether it's something he said, min erudihi, it's like something that you dishonored him in a way, or he said, al shayin, or anything, or anything that you've done as oppression to the brother, fix it now. Qabla la yukuna dinar wa la dirham, before the day comes that you're not going to have a dinar, and you're not going to have a dirham, you don't have money to fix the situation. The only money that you have on the day of judgment is your good deeds. And if you run out of those, then you start to take what? You start to take the bad deeds of the person, that's what's coming in the hadith. He said, in Canada, who amal salih, if he has righteous actions, ukhidha minhu, then it's going to be take, taken from him. All the good deeds that he used to do, is going to be taken from him. And it's going to be given to that person that he oppressed. He said, and if he has no hasanat, no good deeds, ukhidha min sayyati sahibi, then he's, he's going to start taking from what? 
Then the, the bad deeds are from this person who are taken from him to humila alayhi. And they're tossed onto this guy to take the burden of those bad deeds. And this hadith is in Bukhari. So this is a serious issue. And the issues come with oppression because we're too busy focusing on us, ourselves, our rights. We forget the rights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has over us, and we forget the rights that our brothers have over us. Over us. Where like nowadays you start to see, well, Allah, even a, a Muslim will treat a kafir better than he treat his own brother. He stopped giving salams to the Muslim. Stop giving salams to his own brother. But he'll go and greet a kafir with a smile, and good morning, Becky and Tom and David. Look at that. And we see this all the time. Can't act right with the brothers, but he wants to what? Act right with the kufar. You got a problem with each other, solve it now. Solve it, this is your opportunity. Ramadan is your chance to solve all the problems. The problems with yourself, your relationship with Allah. It should be solved by the end of this month. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Rahima Anj, Rajuman, Rahima Anj. What does that mean in the Arabic language? It means may his nose be stuck in the dirt. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu made dua against this person that Allah disgraced him. For what? He said, Rahima Anfu, Rajuman, Rajuman, what? Dakhala alayhi Ramadan. Ramadan entered. Thumman salakh. And then Ramadan left. Kabbalah yukfar Allahu. Before forgiveness, is, and before he was forgiven for his sins, the Prophet Sallallahu said, for the person who wasted this opportunity, Waste the opportunity to have your sins forgiven in Ramadan. Allah said, may he be disgraced. The Prophet said, may he be disgraced. That's a serious dua. That's a serious dua that you're coming into Ramadan. You need to use this time. Fix yourself. Fix your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And fix whatever you have between the people. Because just like the Prophet said in the hadith in Uqbat ibn Amr, this is success. This is the way to be successful. And this is what the Prophet Sallallahu said in this hadith on Uqbat ibn Amr. Radhi Allahu Qala, Kutu Ya Rasulullah, Man Najah. What is being successful? How, how can I win? How can I be victorious? How can I be successful? Faqala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Amsika, Amsika alayka lisanik. Wa liyasa'aka baytuk. Wa abki ala khatiyatik. And this hadith is in Termidhi. He said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, the three things that you can do to be successful, he said, hold your tongue. Hold your tongue. If you have any doubt with what you're about to say, hold your tongue. You end up oppressing people and you don't even realize. Then you come on the day of judgment and you have to answer for all this oppression. The brother doesn't even know that you oppressed him, but you oppressed him. And now you have to answer for it. How can you make something right when you don't even know, when you're not in, in your mind, you haven't even done anything wrong? No, man, take account of yourself. He said, I'm sick, I like the sanic. He said, in your, your house should be sufficient, a place for you. We have to come to the masjid. We're Muslims, we're men. And men pray in the masjid. Women pray at home. Men pray in the masjid. Women pray at home. And the hypocrites. So here, this is the place where the men should be. But if you're not here, and you're not doing other things that you have to do, he says, stay in your homes. Stay in your homes, take care of your families, be with your families, teach your families, and take care of everything that you have to take care of. And he said, number three, he said, He said, cry over your mistakes. You're spending time all, all the time crying over your own mistakes. What do you care about what other people do? You're only focused on what other people do because you're not doing the things that you're supposed to be doing. You focus on yourself, cry over your own mistakes. And it's the same thing that came in the hadith of Anas and this is the last thing, inshallah, then we wrap it up. Where he said, Khatabana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave a khutbah, gave a sermon. He said, I never heard any sermon like this ever. Faqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Lo ta'lamuna ma'alam. This hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. So the Prophet what he said in the, in the khutbah, which was the greatest khutbah, he said, if you know what I know, you'd be laughing a little and you'd be crying a lot. And right when the Prophet said this, the Sahaba, his companions, they took something and they covered up their faces and you can hear the sobbing from everybody. This is the Sahaba, the greatest, greatest of creation after the NBA. The greatest generation crying over their sins.
While we sit here and laugh and joke and think that we're like, what? We're not ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment when we have. So fix everything. Take this opportunity to fix everything that you need to fix. Don't waste it. Don't be from those people that have their nose stuck in the dirt. Allahumma ajalna min al-tawwabin wa anna wajalna min al-mustafirin. Allahumma ajalna hadha shahr mubarakan wa waq li tawba lana. Allah maqfir lana dhanubana wa kaffir anna sayyiatina wa tawafana ma'al abarar. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Aqim al-salat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Shabbat Shalom, 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 Sh